That's true, isn't it, by the way? I mean, how much do you really care about the Senate? Or how was your day, darling, at work? It was pretty good. But what about the Senate? Anyway, that's a bit later on. Now, we've gone to great lengths here on Sun News and on this show, The Arena, to, to analyze terrorism committed in the name of Islam. And we give no time at all to anybody who claims that all Muslims are terrorists or similar garbage. I've got to say, though, I don't actually meet uh, or hear people who say that sort of thing. I don't know if you do, but I don't. It's more a, a straw man invented by Islamic apologists and left-wing activists with which to, to bash anyone who asks intelligent, moderate questions about the very nature of Islam and whether the religion can function and flourish outside of a violent context. These are absolutely essential questions. Quite clearly, though, of course, it, it can. Otherwise, there, there would be attempts to cut off certainly my head and your head every single day. But we're playing the numbers game here. We really are. More than a billion Muslims in the world, and many, if not most of them, living under oppressive governments and with very limited education. I, I mean, no disrespect, but it's true. Look, most Muslims, remember, they don't read or speak Arabic. And the Quran is not allowed in most of those countries to be translated into their vernacular. So they are at the mercy of those who do speak and do read Arabic, who are often the products of increasingly radicalized seminaries. Islam is very much a, 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 a down-based faith. It comes from above, doesn't it? And it's also founded on, on submission and order. Order is not a bad thing, but this is, this is true. There are rules, very strict rules, and very strong demands and commands within Islam. But it's, it's one thing for someone living in despair and poverty to hit out at everything around them. I understand that. Quite another, though, for a young man raised in, say, Britain, with public education, health care, toleration, civilization. You're going to see a short clip from an extremely good documentary that aired on British TV. But remember, this was made almost three years ago. Uh, a lot has, has changed and happened since then. All of it, though, worse, bad, very worrying. Now, the people who made this, and this is just a minute, so you can see a lot more on YouTube, they're not conservative, they're not right-wing, they're not Christian. On the contrary, they're actually more on the left. Have a look. <laughs> They're a generation of angry young Muslim men. You can go to any youth on the street and say, do you believe in jihad? They say, yeah. Do you believe that um, Al-Qaeda are, are, are a terrorist movement? They say, no. We're living at a time of war because the Western world's not letting anyone live in peace. And on Christmas Day, one young extremist tried to turn his radical anger into terrifying violence. Umar Abdul Muttalib from Nigeria boarded a plane to Detroit with high explosives concealed in his underwear. Just 23 years old, Abdul Muttalib is the latest young Muslim to have attempted mass murder. He spent three years at London University. For this... Hmm. And the examples are, well, legion. And there's more than just the terrorism. This is important. In Britain, throughout Europe, it hasn't happened in Canada yet, attacks on Jews gay people, African Christians, Indian Sikhs, and this is all heavily documented. There are schools in England where teachers are frightened of even discussing the Holocaust because Muslim students will become angry, violent. There are areas of London where homosexuals have been told not to visit. Women dressed in just reasonably short skirts are told to stay away for their own safety. It's in Britain. There have been dozens, dozens of cases of gangs of Muslim men who systematically rape, often after grooming, young white girls. I know this is difficult to listen to, but it's far worse to live through. These thugs, so many of them, are not Hindu, they're not Sikh, yet media in Britain insists on describing them as, as Asian, the, the British word for South Asian. It's part of the greater denial, the fear of being labeled racist, or, oh my golly, Islamophobic. But these men are formed in a culture that far too often does not attribute equality and, and human dignity to women, and thus they feel they can treat women as, as meat, possession, slaves. After the murder of that innocent British soldier, there were many condemnations from Muslim leaders, absolutely so. But also, I'm sorry, many refusals to condemn, and even cases of gloating. Several war memorials were attacked with graffiti, and we've already heard the but and however syndrome. You know what I mean? I condemn what happened, but we have to understand the evil of Western foreign policy. And 
what occurred was wrong. However, if Iraq and Afghanistan and so on and so on. Lots more. So much more we can say. Just today, by the way, we're getting news now in, in a British prison where an Islamic leader at a prayer meeting, there are many Muslims in prisons these days, hardly any Hindus or Sikhs, by the way, many Muslims. He said we should now pray for that poor soldier who was slaughtered. This caused some of the prisoners to, to lose their temper, went crazy. They kidnapped a prison warder for three hours, beat him, tortured him. They were trying to kill him. In the end, he was rescued. We need moderate voices right now, and we need understanding and dialogue. But we also need strength and firmness. The problem is not us. It's not the West. It's not our values, our virtues. Shout that out loud, or you and your children will have to live in absolute silence. There are some people who are willing and have the courage to, to speak out with authority about what is going on in the world in terms of terrorism and Islamism. Claire Lopez from the Intelligence Summit has been on the show on a few occasions. She's one of those people. Claire, always a pleasure uh, and welcome back to you. Let, let's talk about beyond what... Oh, thank you, Michael. Thank you. What happened in Britain and what is happening in Britain. That, that's, that is one example of this. And we must remember that that, that monstrosity, that atrocity in London, that sort of thing is replicated on a a daily, certainly, basis in, in throughout Africa and, and the Middle East, and these are generally other Muslims who are being treated thus. But Claire, is, is there some sort of alliance that has taken? We know Iran is behind terrorism. We know Hezbollah commits acts of terror. Uh, but they're, they're Shia. Now, we have Al-Qaeda, which is overwhelmingly a Sunni organization. There's mutual hatred. But there are people who say that these three groups now have formed an axis, if you like. Do you think that's true? It absolutely is true. I mean, the, the, the axis actually, Michael, it, it formed m more than 20 years ago. Um, the the uh, Muslim Brotherhood uh, ruler of Sudan, Bashir, mm. Umar al-Bashir, brought together uh, all these players, uh, what would become al-Qaeda. At the time, it was Osama bin Laden, Ayman al-Zawahiri, uh, plus the, uh, the Hezbollah people, plus the Iranian top leadership. Uh, in Khartoum in 1990-91 and uh, more meetings through the early 1990s and they forged an operational terrorist alliance uh, at those meetings. But if we look at the relationship between Sunni and Shia internationally, there, there is, I mean in Lebanon there's been obviously hot bloody war between them in Syria, uh, sides are, are really being uh, I guess defined to a large extent by that affiliation. In the Islamic diaspora, in Australia right now, there are street fights between Sunni and Shia Muslims. So, but you're arguing that at a terrorist level, they're together? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a little difficult to understand when, when these separate and, and, and opposing things, really, are, are going on at the very same time. And you're absolutely right. At the street level in Syria, in Iraq, they are happily, uh, Shiites and Sunnis, tearing each other apart. And they have done so for the last 1,400 years or so. Um, but, but at the macro level of things, when we're talking about uh, the very top level, that is the Dar al-Islam versus the Dar al-Harb, that is the place where Islamic law rules and against the place where Islamic law does not rule, uh, mostly the West but other places too. Um, it's at that level of opposition that you see these players, Iran, Al-Qaeda, Hezbollah, coming together, even though you're talking about Sunnis and Shiites, against the, the one enemy that they all share, unfortunately, and that is non-Muslims, the Kufar. When, we, when the West took on National Socialism, uh, there was, to a very large extent, a united front, and, and the fifth column was treated with absolute disdain and contempt. There's something very different now. I think most people are aware that Islamism is certainly a major threat, but the establishment, people who actually have authority, major broadcasters, politicians, even law and order officials, they seem so reluctant to actually name names and look at genuine root causes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and I don't know if it's because they're overwhelmed by the magnitude of the threat. I mean, after all, what we're talking about is both nation states, such as Iran uh, and Saudi Arabia, to be honest about it, um, plus uh, sub-national terrorist groups, which are very powerful, like Hezbollah, like Al-Qaeda, and we're talking about them in an alliance. Um, the, the, this is very uh, threatening and concerning. Um, 
but but it's not going to go away if 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 we don't talk about it if we if we pretend that it, this doesn't exist i mean we've had enough attacks where these players work together cobar towers and in, into in, in 1996 uh, the east africa embassy bombings the united states embassies in 1998 the uss cole 2000 and of course 911 and we let them get away with it we did not hold them to account in particular iran in particular saudi arabia although certainly we did go after al qaeda yeah. and hezbollah is agreed upon as a terrorist organization by all but we're not holding them to account this only emboldens them uh, to 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 strike further at us right. now let's talk about uh, a government policy at the highest level because now there is a civil war taking place in syria and if you asked me to take sides i'd find it very very difficult but we have the Americans, the British, not the Canadians, saying we need to arm the rebels. Now, quite clearly, Assad is, is supported on the ground physically by Hezbollah, uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guards, so Shia fascist thugs are fighting for Assad. But he's being opposed. And if you look at, if you look at the composition of the, of, the, of the Syrian rebels, there's a couple of secular units. But the vast majority of them are absolutely affiliated, the, the, the most moderate being the Muslim Brotherhood, all the way to al-Qaeda. But your government is saying we need to arm them. The problem, I, I, I agree. I, the, the problem is that right now, um, the forces in Syria that would be pro-Western, pro-American, Canadian, uh, our Western alliance, and these forces do exist. Believe me, they exist among the Syrian Free Army, but they are receiving no support, no, no, no backing from the Western world. And, uh, and quite to the contrary, just as you point out rightly, Michael, we, we, we've got people going over there and offering support to the worst elements among yeah. the rebels. And, and, and indeed, it's al-Qaeda, it's Jabhat al-Nusra, it's the Muslim Brotherhood, all of that among the rebels, which, you know, we don't want them to, to take power either, even though Assad has got to go. Uh, but we need to reach out to the forces that truly would be pro-Western, uh, liberal, mm. Uh, oh. and, and, and not in league with the Muslim Brotherhood or right. Al-Qaeda. Uh, there, there are very few of those left, and uh, I, I think uh, if the rebels do take over, they will be very, very quickly rounded up and, as they say, disappeared. It's, it's always uh, fascinating talking to you. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you.